Hello and welcome back to the Beefy Tech channel. Today's video is a simple one. I'm going to give you guys the best config file for the highest possible FPS within Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone 2. Right here you're going to notice that I've got the three results that I use from the Modern Warfare benchmark just to demonstrate what the best case scenario of an improvement would be. But before I do this and show you guys the results, I'll quickly walk you through how to get to your config file so you can change things manually. But I'll also provide a copy of my exact config file that you can just delete your old one and paste the new one in. Little thing I need to mention, you want to save a copy of your default config file before putting mine one in, because if you have any issues or you don't like the config file settings, you're going to need to have access to that old config file. Anyway, with that said, let me just show you guys how to do it quickly. You're going to want to go to Documents, find Call of Duty, not Call of Duty Modern Warfare, Call of Duty, click on it, go to Players, and then options.3.cod22. Click on this. And this right here is your config file. Now, I'm going to walk you guys through exactly what I did to get the FPS that I got. But I want to go through the results quickly, just so you understand roughly what you should expect from a performance game. So let's do stock, no config file, no overclock on my, uh, on my system. So this is the very first result I ever got. And as you can see, the result isn't bad by any means. It's 440 on the CPU with 256 lows and overall a 306 average on the achieved results. But look at this figure over here. The GPU 1% lows are 168. Now let's go to the config file version that wasn't fully overclocked yet. Config file, no overclock. And as you can see, things have changed drastically. Remember, this right here, the 288, came straight up only from the config file. Meaning that if you're by any means GPU bottlenecked, this config file would be insanely helpful for you. Now, I do have to, uh, to mention something. Here, I didn't have any overclocks on my RAM. And neither did I uh, boost my CPU higher. I'm on a 7950X3D. I want to show you guys the results with the overclock and the config file on how it went. Now, this, this is a result. 485 average on the CPU, 320 in the lows. And overall, everything is just 10 times better. You can see right here, this is no trickery. I use the exact same settings, Fidelity Cast with my 4090. And just thanks to the overclock and the config file put together, the 7950X3D is nearly a 500 average FPS CPU at 1440p. Anyway, I'm going to walk you through exactly what I did in the config file quickly. And if you guys just want to skip past this part and you want to have the results that I just showed, uh, copy the config file that I showed you and you should be good. It's going to be in the description below. I'll upload it either as a Google Drive or just however I can upload it for you guys to download. Now let's go over exactly what we and my friend did, well, me and my friend did, to make this config file work. We essentially sat down for about an hour and we just went through this. And to keep it a buck with you, it's mostly three things that did most of the work here. But let's go through it together. So, the very first thing that is actually important is going to be the clutter max distance. The maximum distance at which clutter models are rendered. And this, by default, is set to like 2500. Well, we set it to 100. Now what this is going to do is it's going to make trees essentially not spawn in past 100 meters. I know that sounds detrimental, but in fact, I actually prefer it this way. It makes it easier to see people if they're ever, like, next to a tree that is 100 meters away. So if they're in front of it, you'll actually see people better. The next thing we did is corpse culling threshold. And we put that to 0.5. By default, it's 0.85. We're not entirely sure what this does, but I think it has to do with the corpses being rendered and not being rendered. Anyway... The very final thing that is quite important, well, not very final thing, sorry. The next thing is going to be filmic strength, and then there's the final important thing. So this is by default set to 1, turn this to 0, so set this right here in filmic strength to 0, replace it with the, the one over here. And uh, the next important one, the final important one, let me quickly find it, it's particle, particle, particle. Yes, right here. Particle lighting quality level. Pixel per light texel. This one, by default, is set to 64. We set it to 1. This has to do with particle lightning. And also with the amount of textures being rendered during an explosion. There's less uh, things being rendered if this is uh, turned lower, so it will be much better. For example, if somebody throws a precision or if there's explosions, this won't hurt your 1% lows as much. And that's where that 288 1% lows on the 4090 came from, up from a 170. So it's a very important thing to have set to one. The rest, honestly, 
is uh, these are just the in-game settings. They're just set to low. Like most of these are set to off or very low. So that much is very simple. I do also want to mention that texture filtering quality level is important, but normally it should be set to linear already. If it isn't and you have it set to something else other than texture filter linear, uh, just copy the texture filter linear right here and paste it into this area right here. Now, of course, if you just copied the config file, this won't be a worry to you. It will already be this way. But if you're manually inputting everything, just make sure this is set to linear. It's also very important. The reason we're in Modern Warfare 2 in the settings is because I have to go through one more thing you can actually change within Modern Warfare 2 and also help you guys visualize the settings a bit better. Setting video memory scale to 50 unironically helps performance, but there's a caveat. As long as you have 6 gigs of VRAM or more, you can set this to 50. If you have 6 gigs or below, you have to set it to about 75 or 80. That way the game can render all of its textures within that VRAM without having to go to the actual RAM. Another important thing, if you uh, to have this set to 50 and not have any issues, you need to essentially be running low settings with the config file that I showed you guys. Because if you don't do that, you're not maximizing your performance and also you're loading more textures on the VRAM and you can't set this to 50, in turn hurting performance. Regardless, all of the results you saw are these exact settings with fidelity cast at 1440p. And let me just tell you guys, I am honestly really surprised that a config file can do this much. I'm not gonna waste another second of your guys' time. Go out there and enjoy the newly gained performance with the config file. As you can see, you yourself can stand to benefit quite greatly. But I have to give another little caveat in there. This does not translate one-to-one -to, -one to Almazra. Almazra has a lot of textures. And this config file will help, but it won't be as drastic as it would be in multiplayer or Sheikah Island in terms of performance gains. So just keep that in mind. Anyway, guys, I hope today's video is helpful. I try to keep it short so I don't waste a second of your time. Have a good one. Enjoy. Thank you.